All right, well, let's um, introduce our keynote speaker here. Lena Epstein is a candidate for Congress here in the 11th District. Um, Lena, would you like to start off by telling us about yourself, just from your background, your biography? Absolutely. I'm delighted to be here. My name is Lena Epstein. I'm your next Congresswoman. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to make a few comments briefly to give you a little bit of background about me, what brought me to the table, uh, literally and figuratively. I was born and raised in Bloomfield Hills. Uh, I was born in 1999 to a family of very loving Jewish Democrats. Uh, my mom's dad is the late Stanley Winkleman. Did any of the ladies in the room ever shop at Winkleman's? Oh, yes. Okay, and I bet you probably have a coat from Winkleman still in your closet. Uh, some of the finest belongings ever made. Um, my family fled religious persecution in Eastern and Western Europe uh, many generations ago. Uh, my family came to the United States by way of the Upper Peninsula. And we, kept, we were a very, very hardworking family. We still are a family uh, committed to our faith, committed to each other as our family, and committed to our country. Uh, my family followed the path of legal citizenship, not unlike uh, many other families in the room. Uh, my, my paternal father, uh, my, my father's father, is the late Eugene Epstein. And he started a company called Vesco Oil. Has anybody heard of our company, Vesco Oil? Uh, Vesco stands for Victor Epstein Silverman and Company. And it was started by my dad's dad 71 years ago. Uh, I'm going to go back to Vesco in a moment, but I'm trying to give you a little bit of contextual background. I come from a deeply entrenched family in Southeast Michigan, a family that believes in giving back, a family that believes in serving our country, a family that's committed to the American dream, who has embraced the American dream and is determined to protect that American dream. And that's everything that I embody and everything that I will be fighting for as your next Congresswoman. I studied economics from, at, at Harvard University from 1999 to 2003. And it was on the most liberal campus in the United States that I came to terms with a very conservative ideology that I'd always had never switched parties, never changed my orientation, but I was finally exposed to other cultures, other religions, other ethnicities, other nationalities, people from other socioeconomic backgrounds, and I started to ask questions. I came from such a loving family, but it was very insulated. The Jewish community is insulated, and it was in, in, in some ways its own echo chamber. When I got a little space, at some time in Cambridge, I was able to identify that I have always had a very conservative ideology. And what does that mean? That means that I put my faith first, my faith in God. That means that I put my family first. That means that I put my country first. That means that I believe that we must follow the most beautiful document that was ever written next to the Bible, which is the United States Constitution. That our founders designed the most incredible, incredible experiment of which we are all a part, and that is worth fighting for. I came to terms as a conservative that it's the government's role to get out of the way so that we can thrive in our private lives, in our business lives, and that the country can grow in its gross domestic product. So I came home in 2003 and I looked at my mom and I said, I don't know how to tell you this, uh, but, I'm, but I'm a conservative and I've always been a conservative. And she said, well, who, who made you and how did this happen? <laughs> and I said, to, I said, well, you and daddy made it happen because you raised me to think for myself. You raised me to be a strong woman, to, think, to, to, to look at the world, to ask questions, to challenge the status quo, and that's exactly what I've done. In the summer of 2003, I was asked to take over my family business, which is Vesco Oil Corporation. Uh, my father is in poor health. And I had worked every summer in high school and college for the business. I loaded the trucks. I packaged the product with shrink wrap. I, I, I did the truck routes. The only job that I have not done at our company, I've swept the floors. I was the janitor. I called on customers. I did every job, the only, with the exception of driving a truck, because I was not physically strong enough to pull the oil hose. But when we talk about knowing business, knowing what it's like to literally roll up sleeves and work hard. If you're looking at somebody who is the hardest working candidate that you'll arguably ever see in this congressional district race. I never took a day for granted in our business. 
And when I was asked to take it over in 2003, I took, it, I, I took on the challenge. I surrounded myself with managers that were two, three, four times my age that had much more experience than me. And I'm proud to say that in the last 15 years that I've run the business, the company has doubled in size. Uh, we went from 100 employees to 240 employees today. Uh, when I started running the business in 2003, we averaged 100 million in annual sales. Last year, the company had its best year in our 71 year history of just shy of 200 million in sales. When I took over the business, we were in one state and today we're in five. Uh, we are today, our business is one of the largest distributors of ExxonMobil and Valvoline in all of the Americas. It's a big deal, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so why am I sitting here in front of you as your next Congresswoman? That's a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna answer that because this is at the heart of everything that I'm fighting for on behalf of you and all of our families. Does anybody remember 2008? We all lived through it, the recession hit, and a third of Vesco's customers, good morning. Hi, buddy. <laughs> 2008 hit, and a third of Vesco's customers just closed their doors. Didn't even, turn, didn't even eliminate a shift or close one of the factories. Literally, a third of our customers closed their doors. Ownership took a dollar a year for three years. I never saw my father cry so hard. I thought that he was, we were going to lose him. And that, that's when I started looking under the hood of Washington, D.C. I was very concerned for Vasco Oil's future, for the future of all of our employees, the families that rely on Vasco for their livelihood and their sustenance. I was deeply concerned about our customers, thousands and thousands of customers that we service across the Midwest. I was concerned for my neighbors who were, who were experiencing great hardship. I learned in 2008 that 95% of elected officials have never created a job. And these same individuals, and I, I say that respectfully to all of, my, all of my fellow friends that are in elected position, I say that with humility and respect, but 95% of elected officials across the country have never created a job, and yet, and yet these same individuals are introducing, drafting, introducing legislation that would further cripple Vasco oil, our customers, our suppliers, our neighbors' businesses through overtaxation, overregulation, and we're, li we're legislating on things about which they knew absolutely nothing. So I was haunted by this reality. I was terrified for Vesco's future. I'm in my 20s at the time. I'm running this big business, and I decide I'm going to be part of the change that I want to see in the world. And so I'm gonna to continue to run our business, I'm gonna to continue to grow our business, but I'm gonna start getting involved in politics. And I'm living proof that the American dream is real, that any single one of us that wanna have a voice in this process can. 10 years later, I'm here running as your future Congresswoman because I care so much about this district, about Southeast Michigan, about all of us, that I'm willing to put my career on hold I'm willing to run with a husband and a young baby that I believe that the American dream is worth fighting for and I think it's in jeopardy. I became a precinct delegate, joined every club, went to every Lincoln Day dinner in Oakland County, chaired Oakland County's Lincoln Day dinner in 2012. In 2012, we hosted Rick Santorum. The dinner averaged around 450 people. My year, we had over 1,450. So I got a reputation as being someone with results, a businesswoman with results, a political activist, a conservative with results, a wife and a mom who puts faith, family, and country above everything else. In 2015, I came out in very loud and early support for candidate Donald J. Trump. And of all the candidates on the stage, and I believe there were many, many fine presidential candidates, he was the only person that I believed would be able to deliver on campaign promises. This was a man who had, who had a proven track record in business. He knows what it means to build infrastructure. He knows what it means 
to build a building. He knows, he understands land, he understands hiring and firing, he understands taxation, what an over-regulatory environment actually means to citizens in this country. I was very inspired by him. And I was asked to co-chair the state of Michigan for, the, for his campaign. And it was my, one of my greatest honors to do so. And we talk about results. We delivered Michigan for the first time since 1988. And that's a big deal. And I think everyone should give themselves a round of applause for that, because we all did it together. <laughs> I'm running as an America First candidate. I am running to support the president and his agenda. I am pro-life. We just received the endorsement of the Susan B. Anthony list. Is everyone in here familiar with Susan B. Anthony? Okay, you're getting a, sn a sneak preview because we haven't publicized it yet. We received the Susan B. Anthony endorsement. I'm gonna fight for the lives of the unborn. As someone with a six-month-old baby whose name is Emma, I can tell you that life begins at conception. I'm very, very protective of the Second Amendment. I'm a card-carrying member of the NRA. I conceal carry. And I will be staunchly, unapologetically, in support of protecting the Second Amendment. As a constitutional conservative, I believe, I believe in the limited powers of the federal government. When it comes to states' issues, I'm not going to try to legislate on that. I believe in economic growth as a job creator, and I am a job creator. I will do everything in my power to support regulation, uh, that deregulation, and policy that helps businesses thrive. I want to see further tax cuts. I'm thrilled with Donald Trump's success. Thrilled. We're all enjoying a better economic and American experience as a result of a Trump presidency. There's so much more work to be done, and President Trump needs our support. Let's talk a little bit about the 11th District, and I want to take as whatever questions you have, I'm, I'm here to, to field it. The 11th District has been, thank you, best of luck to you and your family. Uh, the 11th District has been identified as a toss-up. It has been in Republican control for quite some time, but it's been identified as a, as a toss-up. So what does this mean for us? This means that the conservatives in the 11th district, we must elect the best candidate to keep the seat in Republican hands. We cannot elect a career politician who has run over and over and over and over again and has not had feet on the street creating jobs in touch with the people that are actually served and constituencies of the district. It's been said over and over, and I'm looking at the women in the room, that Caucasian educated women are going to inform the election result. I will never play a game of identity politics, but the fact that I'm a wife and a mom makes me able to speak with authority on issues facing women. I look forward to serving. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Please take a look at this palm card. We've put a lot of time into this. The first page talks about my background. I didn't mention that I'm an MBA. The, the back is my, is my platform. And most importantly, at the very bottom of the back page is how to find us. Everybody that's here, I hope that you will follow Lena for Congress on Facebook while you're here. Don't leave before checking in. Share your comments. I am an accessible candidate. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. We have over a million dollars on hand. And why does that matter? The money only matters because we're going to be spending it on carrying our conservative message to the voters in the 11th district. We're gonna be using those resources to build out an extensive ground game so that we touch, physically touch, every conservative primary voter. I look forward to serving you uh, Congress is a customer service job. And I say this all the time that our founders, when they wrote this, they said something in Article 1. They said, Congress must meet at, e at least once a year. It's in here, in Article 1, at least once a year. Our founders did not design a, an, an environment where we would have career politicians going from local government, state, statewide, then to federal and to keep, keep moving around. They didn't. Our founders designed this country to be a world where we as citizens would have trades and skills 
and jobs and careers, go to DC, serve our fellow American, and then come back to the private sector. Nobody, nobody in this world will be able to bully me in Congress because I'm not doing this for a job. Let me assure you, this is extraordinarily inconvenient. It is a huge pay cut. And it is my responsibility to be a part of the change that I want to see in the world. So God bless all of you. Uh, God bless Livonia. I have a tremendous amount of business in Livonia. I know Livonia very, very well. The Livonia business community is one of the best in Michigan, in Southeast Michigan. We have some of the hardest working customers in the city of Livonia. So I look forward to serving you. God bless you. Let's open it up for some questions. Thank you. Have you already been primaried? Are you the only candidate on the Republican side? It's a multi-way primary. Uh, the vote, the election is on August 7th. Okay. I'm going to ask you for your vote. I'm going to ask every single one of you in here for your vote on August 7th and to spread the word to family, friends, and neighbors. Uh, I encourage everybody to take a look at the competitive field because respectfully what you'll find is a field of career politicians mm -hmm. and uh, with, with a voting record that's very public. Do your homework. Okay. okay? Do your homework. Do your homework. And how many are there? Four. Four. Okay. Yes. Do your homework. Do you know how many are running on the Democratic side? At least four. Yeah. yeah, right now we're staying in our lane though. We are mm -hmm. staying in our lane and we're going to win. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Robert? Hi, Lena. What made Have you I... become a conservative? That's a question often I like to ask. Sure, I never became a conservative. I was a conservative at, at birth. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I came to terms with a conservative ideology when I was at Harvard. You, I think you missed this because you're a couple minutes late. Uh, not to not to point you <laughs> 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 That's my boy. That's my boy. needs to be punished for being late. No, no, no. But when I was at Harvard, I was exposed to other ideologies, other walks of life, people from other countries, other socioeconomic backgrounds, and I started challenging um, the an indoctrination that I'd had as a kid. I think that there are, when I sit down with members of the Jewish community one by one by one, and we actually have the conversation, what does it mean to be a conservative? Most members of the Jewish community identify with the Republican Party. So there's a tremendous amount of work for us to do. So um, I just, I had an opportunity to think on my own. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. I do have another question. Of course. You just mentioned up here about the Jewish community. Yes. Um, they're traditionally very Democrat. Yes. How are you being uh, accepted? Or, uh... Very, very well received. The first quarter million dollars that we raised from the public was from the Jewish community, regardless of ideology. I have been very public in my support of the state of Israel, uh, and as as a uh, for many reasons, for fiscal reasons, for economic reasons, uh, for of course personal religious reasons, uh, but for also uh, matters of national security. And so the Jewish community is embracing our campaign because I'm a proven leader, I have a proven track record of growing business, I have a proven track record of bringing some, some real success politically as an activist with what I did for the president, and I have the support for what I'm going to do to expand and grow the relationship between America and Israel. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed a, uh, a leftist, uh, like an anti-Semitic drift toward the, over the left? They're getting very anti-Semitic. I don't pay much attention to anti-Semitism. I have a job to do. Yeah, I, no, but I, I, I've, so, I've seen examples of that. Not, not in particular. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't enter entertain that. Okay. Yes. What are the borders of the 11th district? Sure. So <laughs> that the, was a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it doesn't. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not a, a block or a circle. It starts as east as Troy, and moves into the city of Bloomfield Hills. Okay. Birmingham, Auburn Hills, a couple of precincts in Rochester Hills, okay. Clawson, and then as we move west, it moves into Novi, portion of Commerce Township, the city of Farmington, but not the hills, wow. and then Wixom, Livonia, Canton, Plymouth, Milford, South Lyon. It's a big district, wow. and our district is also, I'm very proud to say, the most educated district, and the most, I've, I would, I've been told anecdotally, the most politically engaged district in the state. Wow. It'll be such an honor to serve you. I, I can't hard. wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Are you excited by this? Are you excited yes. by my yes. message today? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so there's a, there's a call to action today. 
I'm gonna ask all of you to be involved in our campaign. Brad Berry is my wonderful campaign manager. Uh, this is gonna be all hands on deck. I'm inviting each and every one of you to our campaign office grand opening. It's on May 5th, and Brad will give, we have yeah, the, so let, me, let me finish please. It's a Kentucky Derby party. Because, and we're asking all the ladies to come dressed up, wear your hats, wear your Winkleman hats if anyone has a Winkleman hat left. And we're gonna have food, spirits, great cheer. It's a wonderful patriotic uh, tradition and it happens to be May 5th is the day of the Kentucky Derby.